Interested in tanking as a demon hunter this season, but don't know where to start? Well, in this video, I'll be giving you the talents, rotation, stats, and gear recommended to help you be the best vengeance demon hunter you can. Before we get to that though, I put a lot of work into my videos, so if you enjoy the content and aren't subscribed, consider hitting the subscribe button, it would really mean a ton. With that, enjoy the video. Before we begin, I'd like to just give a shout out to the people from the Vengeance Discord, uh, such as Meira and Itame, and everyone else who assisted in the guides and things. Uh, they're a big help in the formation of this video, so shout out to them. But with that though, we're going to move on to the talents. So realistically, Vengeance has four recommended talent builds that I'm going to offer you today. Uh, two for Raid and two for Mythic Plus. In each category, there's going to be one that's more survivability focused and one that's a damage focused build. As always, the class tree is fairly mutable and can be changed depending on what you want, um, but it's a little more set in stone for Vengeance in Raid. We're going to start with the Raid builds, with the first being shown here is the Defensive build. This build takes use of the powerful Frailty talents, grabbing the Cheat Death talent as well as Feed the Demon, and things that boost up your Demon Spikes. We also get slight damage boosts on Fiery Brand. This build offers good damage and is super useful for early progression scenarios, especially when you're unsure of the dangerous things that can come and what might kill you. Later in progression, or when you're more geared, you can instead swap over to this build. This build is the much more damage focused build, dropping things in the middle like Feed the Demon and Last Resort, but picking up the very strong talents on the right side like Charred Flesh and Down in Flames, leading to a high uptime on Fiery Brand whilst also amping your fiery damage, which is almost all of your damage is Vengeance. If you want a little bit more survivability here, you can drop Meteoric Strikes for Calcified Spikes, but this build leads to a much higher overall damage profile, but it can be susceptible to spikes of damage or to unknown and unsure spikes, like when you're not sure what happens on a fight. Moving into M+, now, this following build is going to be your general build for almost any scenario and is your go-to M+, build, offering high damage and good survivability. It features picking the fiery brand talents on the right side for a strong mix of survivability and damage, while also picking up the combination of talents in the clash tree that allow for an 8 second silence on a 45 second cooldown with sigil silence. This build features amazing mob control while also providing amazing damage and survivability. The other mythic plus build is going to be your build if you're worried about surviving, or if you simply are pushing incredibly challenging high key content for yourself. By dropping the Fiery Brand oriented talents, you give up roughly 30% damage with proper play, but can grab things such as Feed the Demon and Last Resort, which are very powerful defensive tools, allowing for a high uptime of your spikes and the powerful Last Resort Cheat Death. This build does suffer in terms of damage, however, so only use this if you absolutely need the survivability. Quick note for all the above builds, especially for M, you can swap fodder for Sigil if you need some on demand burst. However, Sigil is just straight up not as good as Fodder is, both in terms of survivability and damage, but if you want to pick that option, feel free to swap to it in the choice node. Next up, we're going to look at the rotation. Rotation for Vengeance Demon Hunter has definitely gotten more complex since the introduction of the new Frailty system, however, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. There are a few different topics to cover here, so I'm going to start with the general opener, followed by the rotational priority, and then give some specifics about complex parts of the rotation. The important part of Vengeance right now is to sync your powerful offensive cooldowns, being the Hunt, Fell Devastation, and Soul Carver, with windows where you both A, have high stacks of frailty, and B, in the case of Fell Devastation and Soul Carver, have Fiery Brand on the target when running the Fiery Demise talent. While at first this may seem daunting, you essentially split your rotation between Brand windows and their setups, and windows where you have Brand and your cooldowns on cooldown. This means that every time you enter a brand window, you want to have as close to 90 fury as possible, as well as having 4 plus souls at your disposal and having immolation aura 1 second or less on its CD. To achieve this, a general opener with all 3 major offensive cooldowns using the firebrand build would follow something such as this. Pre-play Sigil of Flame before a pull, Infernal Strike into your target, Immolation Aura, Use Fractured twice, Soul Cleave until you are out of fury, or Spirit Bomb once first if fighting multiple targets, follow that up with the Hunt, then prepare for a brand window by building to 90 fury and 4 plus souls. Use fiery brand, use immolation aura, use spirit bomb, use soul cleave, use fracture, use soul carver, spirit bomb, fracture, spirit bomb, fracture, and finish it off with a fell devastation. This allows you to set up your first fiery brand and get everything else on cooldown. With things such as fiery brand and fell devastation, since they have defensive value, you can hold them up to a maximum of 10 seconds. However, due to the nature of Vendance and them having just much higher offensive potential, it is recommended not to hold them. Outside of your Fiery Brand windows, the basic rotational priority on single target is as follows. The Hunt on CD when main target has 5 plus stacks of frailty, which should happen fairly naturally. Immolation Aura on cooldown as long as you won't overcap Fury. Soul Cleave to spend souls and Fury, however if you're in um, AoE use Spirit Bomb at 4 plus souls instead. 
Sigil Flame, if you want overcap Fury, generally under 70. Fracture to generate Fury and Souls, generally under 70 Fury and 4 Souls, or 3 Souls and 43 Fury in meta. And use Throw Glaive if you have nothing else. In AoE, this is essentially the same. However, you want to ensure you use Spirit Bomb to spend your Souls and only use Soul Cleave with no Souls. After the opener, your cooldowns won't line up as nicely, and you want to ensure you're saving a Fiery Brand to use with Fell Devastation and Soul Carver. These brand windows will look a little different and will be as follows. For Fell Devastation, you want to start by preparing for your Fiery Brand window by building to 90 plus Fury, 4 souls, and having Immo Aura with 1 second or less on its cooldown. From there, apply Fiery Brand, use Immolation Aura, and then hit a Spirit Bomb. Continue with your normal rotational priority from there until 2 seconds is left on Fiery Brand, so generate with Fracture, spending Fury with Soul Carb and Souls with Spirit Bomb, and then with 2 seconds left on Fiery Brand, use Fell Devastation. For your brand window with Soul Carver, it would go as follows. First, prepare for brand window by building the 90 plus Fury, 4 souls, and having Immo Aura on 1 second or less CD. Then use Fiery Brand, use Immolation Aura, use Spirit Bomb, use Soul Cleave, use Fracture, use Soul Carver, then Spirit Bomb, then Fracture again, then Spirit Bomb again, and then continue with your regular rotational priority. When using this build in AoE, due to the spread time of Fiery Brand, you may choose to delay your burst window by a few seconds to allow brand to spread more. From here, we're going to move into a bit more advanced tips. So first, I want to talk about frailty stacks. Since frailty stacks provide a big damage amp, you want to go into your big cooldowns with as many as possible. With the above priority, you should hit these numbers, and outside of your cooldown windows, the numbers don't matter as much. For each of the big abilities, namely the Hunt and Soul Carver, you want to have 6 or so stacks on your primary target, with 3 to 4 on AoE. And for Fell Dev, you want to have 3 stacks on your primary target, with 2 or so on AoE. This should be fairly attainable, as Sigil of Flame, Soul Cleave, and Spirit Bomb all apply stacks to targets hit, with the latter two applying two stacks to their primary targets. To maximize your AoE burst, you often want to pool resources at the end of dungeon packs, trying to leave the pack with as much Fury as possible, as well as enough souls for a Spirit Bomb. This allows you to enter packs with Spirit Bomb almost immediately before going into your Fiery Brand spread, allowing for much higher snap threat. When talking about Soul Cleave versus Spirit Bomb, the option between the two is a fairly simple one these days. Spirit Bomb is essentially your soul spender, used to turn the souls you generate into damage, while Soul Cleave is your fury spender, best used when you have no souls out and are sitting above 60 fury. In the terms of fodder to the flame demons, you generally do not want to throw glaive your demon to kill it, instead use it to cleave it down and passively pick up the soul after you kill it. There is also a bug with vengeance where the glaive does not automatically kill it, but that doesn't really matter as you should be cleaving it down anyways. Lastly, I want to talk about defensive tools. While the rotations I've outlined above are the DPS rotation, at the end of the day you are still a tank and do need some defensives. While it is recommended to not hold your Firebrand or Feldev due to their damage, you can hold them for up to 10 seconds without that much of a loss, and when using the two charges of Firebrand talent, can keep one for big hits if desired. Realistically, stacking Frailty and our other passive damage should be enough to live things in raid, and can be combined with Demon Spikes to give, really uh, give you that edge. Demon Spikes itself should just be ensured to have one charge on cooldown at all times, and to let them recharge naturally well within meta. Meta can be used just to live large tank hits, but also does offer a damage increase, which is nice. If there's something I haven't covered in this section, feel free to drop a comment asking a question, or to check out the people from the Vengeance Discord and drop a question there. They're super helpful. Stats for tanks are always a funny thing, since tanks scale so much from stamina, primary, and armor that eye level is almost always going to be better than prioring a certain stat, at least for defensiveness. Generally, you should only compare stats when items fall into a certain eye level bracket for each other. This is essentially 3 item levels for legs, chest, helm, gloves, shoulders, boots, and belt. 7 eye levels for bracers and cloaks, and 10 eye levels for necks and rings. If you do get it from that item uh, prio, then the secondaries are as follows for vengeance. Haste is going to be your most important defensive stat, as it reduces your cooldowns and overall just makes rotation much smoother. Critical Strike and Versatility are roughly tied for defensive next, with Verse winning out in raid. Verse is more useful in magic damage, but crit provides higher parry and healing and more damage overall. Mastery is last for both, as its survivability is generally poorer than the others and its offensiveness is minimal. For offensive stats, crit and versatility edge out haste, with mastery still at the bottom. As a general rule of thumb, haste is going to be the thing you want the most, with some mixture of versatility and critical strike following that and mastery taking up the rear. In terms of trinkets, I actually did an entire video on the best trinkets for vengeance, so if you want to check that out, I'll link in the description, it goes more in depth than I will here. But realistically, for hybrid trinkets, all total in the Master, Windswept Pages, Granite Cindering Scale, and Whispering Icon are good pickups, as well as Swirling Bottle of Winds. 
with Manic Grief Torch and Stormeater's Boon being powerful options for damage. If you want more information though, check out my trinket video. Other items to look out for are the Seal of Darren is Chosen and Seal of Filial Duty rings from the raid. These are strong offensive and defensive bonuses when you do fire damage, which is the majority of our damage. For M+, the Storm Slash weapons from No Could and the Jeweled Signet of Melanges ring from Court of Stars are also great to farm. For crafted gear, you're going to want to sink your embellishment slots and do Elemental Lariat first, with Flaring Cowl as your second option if not an Engineer, or if you don't need tier from your helmet. If you are an Engineer, using the Engineer Helmet, then use your other embellishment on Fang Endorments for a weapon for a single target, or Armor Spikes for M+, is going to be a really good way to go. Grabbing the Engineering item is important, as it allows us to have a B res, which is incredibly useful for dungeons. You're probably wondering why I would recommend crafting two Helm items when our tier comes from Helm. The reason for that is that the tier helm is itemized poorly for vengeance, being heavy mastery, and the other two options are quite powerful. For our tier, you're going to want to use shoulders, chest, gloves, and legs, and replace the helm with one of the two crafted things I mentioned above. Our tier itself is strong, but should be treated as a passive bonus rather than something you play around. The two piece causes our generator fracture, or shear if you're using that talent for some reason, to deal 20% more damage, generate 20% more fury, and have a 15% chance to generate an extra soul shard. The four set causes Spirit Bomb and Soul Cleave to have a 12% chance to deal 50% more damage and cause targets they hit to deal 15% less damage to you for 8 seconds. This is powerful, but the 15% chance isn't high enough and the 15% damage reduction is also not strong enough or reliable enough to play around and save defensives and is better treated as a nice passive. When it procs, you're happy, but when it doesn't proc, it's not the end of the world for you. In terms of enchantments, you're going to want to pick up the Leech enchantments for your Cloak and Wrists, being Regenerative Leech and Devotion of Leech, respectively. Use Waking Stats for your chest, Frosted Armor Kits for your legs, Watcher's Loam for your boots, and Devotion of Haste for your rings. For weapons, you'll want Sovic Devotion or Wafting Devotion for defensiveness, or Frozen Devotion for offensiveness. Sovic Devotion is going to kind of be the option that sits in the middle of both. For Files, File of Glacial Fury is going to be your highest damage dealing option, with File of the Eye of the Storm being a good option when fighting multiple targets, while also providing defensive benefit. If you want a more defensive option for Raid, consider File of Static Empowerment. Lastly, File of Elemental Chaos is a good all-around pick. For weapons, Howling Rune is going to be your best, but Buzzing Rune or Primal Whetstone can be used for more DPS. The food should be eaten as Grand Banquet of the Kalawak when possible. Faded Fortune Cookies can also be used as solo food for agility, as well as Aromatic Seafood Platter for Raid and Feisty Fish Sticks for M+. Finally, gems should be one Fierce Eliminated Diamond, and then Air Gems in order to proc the Haste proc from your crafted neck. These gems will feature Major Crit or Verse and Minor Haste, being the Crafty Alex Strawzite for Crit or the Energized Malagite for Verse. And that's it for my Vengeance Demon Hunter Guide for Dragonflight Season 1. Apologies on the length of getting this out to you all, life kind of got in the way and I ended up dropping the ball on that, but things will get better in the future. Anyways, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or to head over to the Demon Hunter Discord and ask a question there. People will gladly help you out. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, and if you really enjoyed, consider leaving a sub. It really mean a lot. With that, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.